Hey there, welcome back. So let's talk about how the Unity version of my little project here fared. Let's dive right in. Okay, so this is the Unity version of my project. Um, it works pretty much the same way as the Godot version. I made a couple design changes. Uh, instead of having the boxes list how many health points they have, um, I just used a heart and then a dot. Uh, everything else works pretty much exactly the same way. Uh, you combine pieces to get matches. Those matches, uh, if it's in a row or a column of the same number that's on the piece, will make it go away, and so on. So let's talk about how I designed this here. Actually, first, before I get too into this, I want to make a really quick shout out to Will Nations, who made a comment on the Godot version of this, where he mentioned that there are uh, ways that you can make a 2D array work without needing to do the cheat that I did. Uh, there are some packages on the Godot asset library that you can use to make a, a 2D array in a much easier way than what I was doing. And there's also a package on the asset library to make an array of um, packed scenes so that you can make that in the in the export menu instead of having to do what I did where you're making an array of the paths. So those are things that have been at least are being addressed or have been addressed as far as Godot is concerned. So let's talk about how I built this. Uh, I built a board here pretty much exactly the same way as the grid object that I have in my Godot scene. Uh, in my prefabs, I have a prefab for each piece, one for the box, and one for the explosion effect. I know I don't have to make one for each piece, but I don't know. It's just a workflow that I like. Um, I'm used to teaching 13 to 17 year olds every day, and I think it's easier for them to, when I've done projects like this before, it's easier to understand having uh, each piece be a separate object versus having one piece object that you then assign a texture and a value to. So it's just how I do stuff. I have a canvas here that has a couple different objects in it. First it has a score holder, and then it has a counter holder to hold all these little counters. And I have my game over handler, which holds my uh, game over script, or not my script, my game over text, and then a little restart button. Uh, the restart button wasn't in the Godot version. I just added that because I realized that, you know, once you get a game over, you can't do anything in the other version. Um, and as far as uh, attaching those, uh, I am using a signal system that I built uh, using some ideas that I got from a talk from Shell Games in order to create some loose connections between the board and the score manager and the counter manager and the game over manager so that there's not a rigid connection. So right now I can turn the game over manager off and it's not going to break anything. Same thing with either the, the high score or the score manager or the... Uh, the counter manager. Those can all be turned off and it's not going to make the board freak out. Everything else is going to work exactly like it should. Um, so yeah, this took me, I don't know, about four and a half hours, which is a little bit longer than it took me to build the Godot version, but most of that is in was me uh, getting this little scriptable object system set up that I didn't need to. If I had just gone my old way of building stuff in Unity by making rigid connections, it would have taken significantly shorter. Uh, however, I wanted to make something that was a little more flexible that could be used again and again and again. And I also wanted more practice with this signal system that I'm going to be using in other projects going forward. In fact, I think I'm always going to use it because it was nice being able to get through an entire project without realizing I should get a null exception error or being able to remove things and not getting a null exception error. So that's awesome. Um, as far as scripting goes... Uh, let me actually open up my scripts here. I'll meet you back here in just a second. Okay, so I have eight scripts here, and the total lines of code came to right around 450, so not bad. My Godot version, I think, was maybe 100 less than that, maybe 350 lines of code. However, uh, Godot is a language that doesn't need the braces, so I'm actually, I actually imagine that about 100 of that comes from just the braces. So it's pretty comparable as far as the amount of code that's necessary, and as far as the complexity of the code, it's pretty much the same. The only real difference, I'd say, is that whole brace thing. And again, this is from somebody who teaches 13 through 17-year-olds every day. Um, Godot is nice for people who are new to programming or maybe don't have a ton of experience programming because it's 
not as picky uh, because it's a dynamically typed language. It's higher order. There's all kinds of reasons that you wouldn't want a dynamically typed language, but um, you don't have to have so many issues with the uh, parentheses and with the braces. So that is something that maybe people who are new to programming or people who don't have a ton of programming experience might want to know. Um, yeah, so, oh yeah, and uh, in those 450 lines, um, all of the tweening is happening through an external library. Uh, I used DoTween, which is free on the Unity Asset Store. So in Godot, it was a built-in node. Um, this was just a, a library that I, I just imported. It was free. Um, so as far as complexity goes, it doesn't really make that project any more complex, really, unless you don't know how to use the Asset Store. Um, all I had to do was just uh, import that project, or not the project, just import the files, and then just calling it. The only thing that I think was really complex about this was um, do tween doesn't have a very good explanation about how to change what kind of easing you're using. Uh, I wanted to use the ease out bounce, which is something I was using in Godot. And this dot set ease was something that for some reason, maybe it's just me, maybe I'm just, you know, not very smart, which is incredibly possible. Uh, I just had some trouble finding exactly where to set that. So I just had to mess around a little bit and do dot and then type in ease a whole bunch of different variations until I found out how to set the ease. Um, but it's just one line, and this line, the line itself is actually less complex than the Godot version, the interpolate property with the five different arguments. You just tell it that it's a move between uh, where you're moving to, how long you want it to take, and then what kind of ease you want. So that was pretty easy. Um, the other thing that you will notice if you've never used Unity before is that rather than having a window inside Unity that has the code, Unity uses an external code um, program. In this case, it's using Visual Studio. Uh, when you download Unity for the first time, it'll prompt you to download Visual Studio as well, and it will automatically link itself to Visual Studio. You don't have to use this. You can use other uh, C-sharp um, uh, IDEs. You can use Xamarin, um, Writer, uh, MonoDevelop, any of those that you might want. Uh, I did hear some comments on the last video that they were a little unhappy with Visual Studio on Mac. And, I mean, I don't know. I use Visual Studio on both Windows and Mac, and I don't really notice that many differences anymore. Uh, when it was VS Code, uh, Visual Studio Code on Mac, then, yeah, sure, I noticed differences. But, I mean, it's, it's very, very similar right now, as far as I'm concerned. So, uh, as far as using it on Mac versus using it on Windows, I would say that the the two behaviors are pretty much uh, in line with one another. Um, but that is something that maybe new people might need to know, is you will be using two different programs to, pro to code in Unity. You'll be using Unity to design stuff, and then you'll be using Visual Studio or some other IDE in order to write your code. Uh, some people even just use WordPad, which, holy cow, that's a, a ninja move. Um, anyway, so that is something that you might need to know. Now, as far as my general thoughts go, um, I really like both of these engines. I think Unity is awesome. I think that the world of game development in general owes Unity a debt of gratitude for what it's done to democratize game development in the last few years, in the last decade, really. I don't think Unreal would be free to use or that you just have to pay a royalty if it weren't for Unity nipping at their heels. Um, so I think, honestly, anybody who does anything in game development um, and the, just the amazing tools that we have right now have a huge debt to owe to Unity. Uh, Unity is not open source, however, so if that's something that means something to you, then you need to use Godot or another open source engine. Uh, I feel like Unity has a lot of excellent tools, and it's made itself to the point where it's really pretty easy to, to get up and get moving. Uh, if you're able to use Photoshop or Illustrator or any of those other um, programs, Unity shouldn't be too bad. It's sensibly laid out, I think, and I think it's easy to get most people up and running on it. Um, however, C Sharp is not necessarily the most beginner-friendly language. Um, there are people who will disagree with me, and that's totally fine. You're right, I'm wrong. But in my opinion, um, where I teach you know, 13 to 17 year olds how to program every day, um, I think that C Sharp isn't the the language I would choose to start with. I would probably choose Python or a Python derivative like GDScript. So if you're brand new to coding and you've never done anything like that before, I'd probably suggest you start with um, Godot or Pygame. Uh, in this case though, 
if you feel comfortable with it and you're brave enough to keep going until you get it right, then yeah, go for unity. Um, I think unity is pretty awesome. So yeah, those are just my general thoughts about the differences between the two engines and how this, pro this uh, project went. I want to do this again with something 3D. Um, and I want to talk a bit more about those asset libraries that Unity has, because if there's really anything that you want to do, there's an asset library for it. And a lot of them you can find for free. Um, so Unity has a wide range of behaviors that you can have, not just what it comes with out of the box. So uh, if you have any questions or if you want to tell me I'm wrong about something, feel free. Um, comment down below. Uh, if you like Unity more than Godot, please feel free to let me know in the comments down below. If you like Godot more than Unity, let me know in the comments down below. And if you think they're both awesome, like I do, let me know in the comments down below. Um, you can follow me on my Discord, or follow me on Twitter, where you can find out when I post new videos. You can join my Discord, where I'm chatting pretty much every day. And yeah, um, I just think game development is awesome. More, uh, more things, more people making stuff, I think is great. So, yeah. Everybody out there, have yourselves a wonderful day.